Hey everyone, it's Tyler. I'm here on site at the church and school. Uh, I've got two more AI keys to install. And then I wanted to show you how I use the DisplayCast Pros from Ubiquity here at the church to show on multiple televisions. Here in our broadcast room, we have this rack over here. This houses a lot of our broadcast equipment. And up top, we have two Ubiquity Display Cast Pros. And those are running two Blackmagic HDMI to SDI converters. And those are converting the signal to be able to plug into this video hub. This video hub has 20 inputs and 20 outputs and can do 4K. It's a little difficult to see, but in the back, all of our TVs are plugged into the switch, as well as all of the feeds that we want to send to the TV. So we're sending our broadcast signal, um, a couple other signals, but also we're sending the DisplayCast Pros to the switcher. And so this allows us to take any of the feeds, whether it be the broadcast or the DisplayCast Pros, or just an image, and send it to any of the televisions within the building. One display cast is going to this TV that is in portrait mode. And that's for our outpost uh, central over here for more information. And then we have TVs throughout the building that we can send video to. I have the video switcher hooked up to our Ubiquity network, and that way I can control it via my laptop. So here we've got the software, and we have all of our TVs here. There are eight total TVs. So if I wanted to switch the output on this TV, I can just click on that TV and change the output. So I switched it there. Our broadcast is currently off, so it's not gonna show anything, but I can switch it back to the DisplayCast Pro if I want to. So that's how we're able to send the video feed from the DisplayCast Pros to any of the televisions we have in the building. Prior to this month, we weren't able to do that because the DisplayCast Pros would not allow us to change the resolution, but Ubiquity sent out a uh, update and allowed us to change resolution so that helped with the converters because they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't see the 4k 60 image for some reason so being able to change that is great and for those wondering this is the blackmagic video hub that we are currently using and for those that don't know this is the displaycast pro from ubiquity it's 279 dollars what's cool about this is it has a web mode so you can actually hook up keyboard and mouse to this and have it be interactive on a screen. You can show YouTube videos, but also um, you can do slideshows and videos and automations on this device for your televisions. So here in the Connect app for the DisplayCast Pros, we can see the two that we have here. And if you click on it, it shows what's currently being shown on the TV. And then we can see the status and connection, name and all that stuff, resolution, uptime, that's all there. Under settings, we can name it. We can control the power, um, volume, resolution, uh, landscape or portrait for orientation. And then if these were directly connected to TVs, um, the DisplayCast Pro can turn the television on and off. But since we're running it to a converter and to a switcher, uh, we don't have that option. And we can show media here and change the fitting. And then you've got your usual restart, locate, remove. In the software, you can do automations. So you can schedule different uh, slides or videos to show at certain times. And if they were directly connected to the TVs, you can uh, schedule the TV to turn off and on at certain times. 
And here we've got media. So you can upload your JPEGs or video files here. You can create playlists. So here's one playlist here. We have all these slides and you can choose the duration that the slide is gonna show. You can do slide transitions. You can add background music. They also have layouts. So you can layer different slides and videos. So you can show multiple things on the TV at once. You can add background music. Then there's different content layers. You've got your media and they actually have stock images. So if you wanted to put a stock image here, let's say you wanted to fill in the rest of the area with text, you can do that. So there's a bunch of stock images in here. You can add text, you can add a clock, and all of this is movable on the screen. You can move it where you want. And then there's also a ticker. So you can add that as another layer. And there's a bunch of different settings for that. So I think the DisplayCast Pros are pretty unique in what they can do. Uh, for us, they allow us to not have a computer running the whole time just to show slides. This allows us to have the DisplayCast running and just take the video feed when we feel like it. We did install the uh, touch pads. They've been working great. Okay, so this site currently has one AI key and I've got two more here. So let's get those into the rack and get those installed. Okay, so on the other side of the building, here we've got this rack. This is for the school side. We currently have one AI key installed. So I'm going to go ahead and take this AI key rack out and we'll get the other two installed. Okay, I got all three mounted in this toolless rack. That's what I like about this is the AI keys just snap right in there. And then I'll screw this into the rack. There we go. Two more AI keys in the rack. Let's go get them adopted. Here on the computer, we can see two AI keys detected. So I'm gonna hit add. And it's added those two. And just to show you what I mean of why we needed two more, you can see here, uh, this is the queue and the processing for the first AI key. So during the busy hours, it says there's a queuing latency. So that means the device is not able to process um, other video footage when the queue is full. And then when it gets back to green, then it's good. So we needed to add more AI keys so we can divide up uh, all these cameras to be processed by more AI keys. I originally thought that having multiple AI keys, you would actually assign different cameras to different AI keys. But when I do that, it assigns those certain cameras to all three AI keys. So it looks like adding more AI keys creates a cluster and it doesn't divide up the cameras per se, like for each AI key, it just creates a cluster of computing processing power, I guess. So that's cool. I didn't know it worked like that. So I'll give this a few weeks and we'll see what happens with the processing. So there you go, uh, installed the two other AI keys. Um, and so we'll see how the processing goes over the next couple weeks and I'll fill you in on that uh, in a video down the road. So if you have any questions about the display casts or the Blackmagic switcher or the AI keys or anything else ubiquity, let me know, put it down in the comments and I appreciate you all. I'll see you on the next one.